What's up? My name is Dylan Green, and I am going to walk you all through some collaging stuff. Fantastic! I recently started collaging for a client project, and it has been so much fun. And I'm totally new to all of this, but I feel like I've picked up a few little tricks and so on, and I figure that I'll put them online, and maybe it'll help some people out with their own collaging endeavors. So... Um, anyways, I guess like the overall focus of like what is going to happen here is just like cutting techniques, uh, tools that I've been using, things that I've been finding helpful, um, and then final products. So obviously collaging is an art form and it can be used to create permanent art, but it can also be digitized and used as different types of like assets and elements to create uh, digital works, whether it's for social media or marketing purposes or animation or video, etc. So let us get into it. Okay, so when it comes to cutting, I've found that the way you position the scissors is mega important. And let's find a good example. Holy smokes. This lady just chugging some milk looks amazing. Oh, one other thing that I just forgot that I'll mention. If you see something that you like, I would recommend checking out the back to make sure that there isn't something on the back page that's better than what's on the front. And I didn't do that, so I already cut through here, so I kind of messed up, but it's all good because this lady chugging milk is kind of the vibe. So typically what I do is I just kind of do like a general cut. So we just get, we just get our, our image there. And usually what I do is I go through and get all the things that I like and make a big, nice stack of them. Then I go back. And when we do the detail cutting on this, I recommend if you're right-handed, keeping the subject to the left of your scissors. So, you know, just going in and get, being really precise. Now, the reality here is that you're creating reality when you're cutting with these scissors. So if you cut into the subject a little bit, that's okay because, um, again, as long as it doesn't mess up the shape, you're fine. However, you want to make sure to really get the background out as much as possible because there's going to be contrast between the subject and the background. And if you and if that's seen, it'll um, like when you scan, you'll see that that background and that's kind of can be annoying. I was mentioning to keep the subject on the left hand side of your scissors. The reason for that is if you're doing it the opposite way. So like over here, for example, it's more difficult as a right-handed person, I feel to really see what you're doing um, because the subject matter is being blocked by the blade. I've just found that keeping it to the left, the subject matter to the left is the, the way to do it. There we go. This fine lady is just chugging milk or water or something. So now let us get her scanned up. All right, so when I was looking for a printer, copier, scanner thing, I really wanted to get one that, I wanted to make sure that I got one that had like really strong photo capabilities. And this is the Canon TR7020. And I was told at Best Buy that this is the one to get. We get our little art piece. Here is our lady chugging something. Put it in the back left corner because that's what the instructions say. And then you take your uh, white piece of paper. And again, what this does is you just line that up in that same back corner. And it gives you a nice full just white background which makes photoshopping out uh, the background for the digital copy of your art really, really easy. Uh, so get that in there and then we'll head over to the computer where we will um, scan this sucker. Okay, so we have our art down in the scanner with a white piece of paper over the top. So what I'm going to do on my computer is I'm going to go down to this Canon Scan Utility app. And this was a little bit of a hassle. The instructions that came with the printer essentially let, lead you to a website to download a driver so that your computer can connect with the printer wirelessly. And when you have this opened up, um, you do a photo scan. Um, auto looks like crud, document is for documents, 
Uh, the photo is the way to go because we want this to be a photo quality scan. Great. So let's hit photo. It's gonna search for the printer. It's gonna warm up. So then it goes into a folder and you can preview it. And there we have our lady chugging some water or milk or whatever. Um, as you can see, we have this nice white background, really easy to use. One of my favorite things um, about these scans of these old images is this like natural half toning that you get in here with that photo quality scan. Um, as you can see, I was pretty tight with my edges, making sure that we don't have the contrast of that background. Um, you can kind of see right in here, I did miss some of that. But the beauty of what we're gonna be doing is um, Photoshop can take care of all of that. So let's bring it in to Photoshop. Kumo, you're annoying. You are annoying. <coughs> oh my God, I just burped and sneezed and coughed. So we're in Photoshop. Um, some of you might be very well versed with it, but I'll just kind of go through each step. Um, unlock your image. I zoom in a little bit. Uh, first thing I do is I press M for my selector tool, select my area here, and then I just do a good old crop. So then that way we just kind of focus in where we're working. Very nice. I go for our quick selection tool. Let's uh, make sure that's selected. Okay, so now the quick selection tool really does a pretty damn good job when you put that piece of white paper in the background. Um, one thing that you might wanna check is to zoom in, make sure that you're really getting everything. Um, if you wanna take some away, you, I hold down option and just click. Uh, it, ex it changes out our lines a little bit, our outline. Um, but yeah, you can just press delete and all of a sudden, is gone. Um, so again, there was that little bit right there. Um, if you hit E, you can pull up your eraser and just kind of, let's see, probably make that pretty small and just kind of correct a little bit of that right in there. That looks pretty good. And I mean, you can clean up some lines. It really depends on how finicky you want to get with this. Um, but even like, so I thought that having this blue in this space was kind of cool. But the beauty with Photoshop is we can, we can have both. So first thing I'm gonna do is export quick PNG. And this is pretty much like, I mean, all there is to it. But what I can also do is go back to that selector tool, select our layer, um, and just get this blue out of here, you know? So we have both versions in case I wanna have both versions. Um, there was this stream of liquid there, so I'm gonna make sure that we keep that. See how tight we can get on that. It's looking pretty decent. Let's make sure we keep her lip in there. Delete that. And now we can uh, export a second version. And we'll just call it No Sky. Obviously the rest of that name isn't ideal, but okay, so we're going to drop down Photoshop and review these images. So you can click that. Uh, they're just here on my desktop and looking pretty good. Now that definitely can be a little bit cleaner, um, but that's pretty sweet and that's definitely something that we can work with. So I am now gonna show you an interesting trick about what you can do with these on your mobile device. Alrighty, so let's open up a finder window and let's open up another finder window. Let's go to AirDrop. We actually only needed one. Okay, so there's my, my phone is showing up there. I can actually drag and drop this. So we're just gonna AirDrop that PNG to my phone. It's gonna pop up in my camera roll. Now we can go to Instagram. All right, so when we're on Instagram and you wanna go to stories, and this can be really, really useful for um, all sorts of things. But for example, here's another image that I scanned and I actually can go in and use this guy for the sticker tool and look at that. How neat is that? Um, and you can do multiple. Um, let's go to some other PNGs I have, you know, and look at that. That's pretty neat, right? On, 
on your computer, you can do all sorts of different things. Again, you can reutilize these digital Im images, these PNG files in so many different ways. Like I said earlier, animations, video assets, um, art projects, what have you. Uh, I think it's a really unique way to repurpose material in a way that, you know, makes something pretty unique. And then again, if you want to, you can make something permanent with, um, you know, by just gluing onto paper, of course, that will render your piece of art not usable again, unless you've digitized it. So anyways, uh, I hope this wasn't too long winded. I hope this was useful. If you have any questions, just drop a comment in. And if you, if you make something, find me on Instagram and tag me in it. I would love to see your collage work and I'm definitely gonna be posting some of mine because it is a blast. Anyways, get out there, don't cut yourself and have a good time. Fantastic. <laughs>